been in this office for the most part 23 years. Cool. Yeah. I like it. I'm used to it. I've had office mates, but they keep leaving me. So <laughs> now I have it all to myself. <laughs> How long have you been in this office alone? Uh, probably about maybe five or six years. About that long, I'm thinking, since the last person retired that was here. And were they also a professor of psychology? No, she was a professor for the early childhood education program. Oh, she okay. was wonderful. And I miss her every day. Mm. Yeah, she's a great office mate. I see uh, you have a three, well, it looks like three and a half bookcases worth of just stuff here. What is that? Is that all psychology stuff? It pretty much is all psychology stuff. Some of it is old grade books and exams and who knows what I've got over there. I mean, most of it's exam books. I see a whole bunch of phone books, whoever sees those anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, my resources, things I use during the year. Right. So how you been? What have you been doing lately? Been well. Uh, I became department chair for the um, arts and sciences department. Well, I'm sorry, liberal arts and sciences department. So that's been good. I've been enjoying that. I did that years ago. And, and as I'm thinking about retirement, it's sort of my last hurrah. Uh, so department chair, what else have uh, I been but doing? <laughs> your department chair of? Liberal arts and sciences. So I thought, it was, beha- I thought it was behavioral and social sciences. They might have changed the name. <laughs> <laughs> the names change frequently. The thing is, that when I was looking you up, I saw, oh, department chair for behavioral and social sciences. Okay. And I thought, oh, he's probably been that for a while. That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> the names change, the organizations, the groupings change from yeah. time to time. But I'm pretty consistently in charge of psychology, history, criminal justice, uh, early childhood education programs, yeah. although those last two have their own – um, program coordinators. Right. And I think if you were to be head of an entire swath of what you would call the umbrella of liberal arts and sciences, you would pro- the title would be dean or something like right. that. Right. You're right. Yeah. I, yeah. I would be dean and I don't want to be dean. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good where I am. Yeah. <laughs> so are you doing anything cool over the summer? Not a lot. Just things around my house, trying to get my house prepared for again, retirement. You know, that's what mm. I'm thinking about now. Um, did some gardening. I love to do gardening. It's very therapeutic for me I like to be out in the yard. I don't think, I can't remember if you were teaching any like summer online course, courses or anything. Not this year. No? Okay. In past years I've done that. This year I decided to take a little break. Yeah, mm. I, it's good to get that recoup during the summer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I had the same kind of, well, not, I, guess, I suppose not, but I I might have taken like a class over the summer to like, so just to fill out a class, but I because I want I started doing this podcast mm-hmm. and I for I had forgone having a job right. even though I would have wanted to um, have some income over summer because I wanted to be able to like be openly available to podcasts like anyone at any time you know what I mean right yeah so you need sponsors is <laughs> that, <yeah. laughs> I. I wouldn't say no, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> unless it were like a, uh, <laughs> unless it were like um, some kind of conservative uh, political group, uh, right? <laughs> yeah, I guess choose your sponsors wisely, <laughs> or uh, sponsors should choose their sponsees wisely. Mm. I suppose. Also, a good point. I I would say, I mean, I would need a bigger audience in order to, like, get that kind of traction to attract people to pay me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you said you just launched this, right? This yeah, podcast? Just, this, just this past week I did. Oh, awesome. So is this your first show, your second show? Your th- your, I In the summer, uh-huh. I recorded like a dozen episodes. Okay. And then I launched it on September 1st. Okay. The first episode is up. Awesome. And it will be uh, released weekly. So That's great. I will have to find it. Benson Ty. The podcast with Benson Ty. The podcast with Benson Ty. Yes. All right. That's because I know I'm pretty sure no no other show has that name. No, I'm sure not. <laughs> not only that, but I can tell hey, would you would you like to come on the podcast? <laughs> sure. What's it called? <laughs> uh the, the podcast. podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but That's funny. and then of course the full title well is the podcast with me. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny. Good for you. I'm glad to see you doing this. Yeah. Yeah. And um, uh, that one class I did take over the summer was on an intro to sociology class at okay. at, at Northwestern. 
Oh, is so, that right? You took it here? Yeah. Okay. I mean, in digitally, I took it here. Right. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> and how was it? Uh... I'm hoping you're going to say good, but I'm seeing hesitation it was, here. <laughs> I, I would say it was fine. All right. Um, I think I have like li- little background knowledge about sociology. Yeah. But from what I could tell, I thought of it as like kind of like psychology ish mixed with like communication studies. Yeah. Kind of. I mean, we do have a lot of overlap. Major differences. Sociology focuses on groups. And it's strictly descriptive. Yeah. Psychology can do that, but can also focus on individuals and can go beyond description to do explanation. To be prescriptive. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I guess that's a good way to put it. Yeah. And um, I, you know, I, the material I found was interesting. Good. But I wasn't so hot about the instructor because okay. part of the way they wanted to operate the class, which I suppose it is a necessity mm-hmm. because it's online, right. but they wanted us to do like discussion board kind of things, right? And so you post it, you post your own kind of thoughts and interpretation, answering this uh, prompt, right? Every week, and but then you also have to offer two replies to other people, right? That are quote unquote substantive, yes. And sometimes that can be difficult because from if everyone is kind of not all there. They're just kind of (laughs) all posting the same thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I got lucky quite a few times because I'm mostly, as an English major, I'm mostly just looking for people using words wrong or or just like minute um, misunderstandings about the text. You know what I mean? Right. So I was going to say, when you said that, using words wrong, I, I one very clear memory of you when you were in class with me was you corrected me on my word usage for something. I don't remember what it was, <laughs> but that rarely ever happens. So I'm always impressed when it does. It was like, good for you. You were right. I oh, was I thought, wrong. I was like, wow. I thought you were going to say you pompous little. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> like this kid. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was, I love when that happens. It doesn't happen a lot, but I do like when it happens. I mean, sometimes, um, most of the time when I do that, right. it is purely for comedy. Oh, is that right? Because when you, if you're really trying to correct someone and it's like very, you're, cha- you're actually trying to challenge them on it. Yes. It feels like an attack on, on the other person, even though you really, it's, you want to do it for the benefit of them and everyone else listening because it's like, well, what you said there is actually wrong. I would like to make sure everyone knows what's right. Right. And so, and the thing is, you know, people are very, even if they have a flawed understanding of whatever they're talking about, they really want to, they feel it does, it feels like an attack on them and they really want to uh, dig their heel in and be like, no, I'm pretty sure I'm right. Yeah. Yeah. And so I feel a little bit torn on when I would want to correct people. I guess you'd have to be comfortable enough to do it. So I mean, you were comfortable I mean, enough if, in class. Yeah. If it's um if it's a very minor detail uh-huh. of in the end it doesn't change the gist of what whatever they were saying. It was just a, right. they misspoke a little bit. I'm right. not gonna I'm not gonna do anything. It's just but sometimes I will like do like uh little twiddles with speech like uh you just maybe you said like I said it's I'm if I do it and I openly and like kind of make a show about it. It's mostly me just doing it for comedy. Like um, if you pronounce something just a bit wrong, it doesn't really matter. Right. I'm going right. to do it in a, in a manner that is comedic because that's what I'm going yeah. for. And I don't think that's what it was. I think I used a word incorrectly and in my head. I had the wrong meaning and you corrected me on the definition of the word. Like I said, <laughs> it does not happen a lot. I like when it happens. Yeah. But yeah good for you. Yeah. But um, oh, one other thing about this socio- sociology course. I yes. There was already quite a bit of stuff to do, like week to week. Right. You have to read this many chapters, answer these questions. Right. But they also wanted me to write a paper. Yes. Not only write a paper, but read a book and then write a paper. Right. They had... They try to have me read A Wrinkle in Time and try to write a paper offering like sociological interpretations of, of A Wrinkle in Time. Okay. I signed up for sociology, not English. Right. But, but also, the way they outlined the assignment, mm-hmm. it was like, um, read the book. Uh, I'm going to look for four pages, mm-hmm. two pages worth of summary, and then two hmm. pages worth of analysis. And don't please do not write more than four pages 
because I will not read more than four pages. Huh. And, you know, as someone who writes papers a lot, right. and I, you know, after really intensive English courses where I'm, I really do have to write good papers, I, fo- I thought, I, I suppose there is a reason why you're not an English major, professor, so-and-so. Because this format you have, about two pages of summary plus mm-hmm. two pages of analysis in that order, mm-hmm. that's what they wanted. That I'm not going to write like that, okay? I know how to write a good paper. The way I think about it, summary, that's just a waste of time right there. Most of the, of the substance within your paper mm-hmm. should be analysis, your interpretation. At the most, summary is there to give background yeah, to the argument exactly. you're trying, the point you're trying to make. Yes. And it should be at most like just a few lines, just again, to give background. Well, it just really depends on how much is germane to what it is that you're saying. Yeah. It will determine how much summary you need to use. Yeah, yeah of course. That makes sense. I think that, that – By the way, I got a B minus. You know, I was going <laughs> to ask you that question and I got to tell you, I'm surprised. <laughs> I, I would have thought you'd be better than that. I, I mean, based on their, their grading criteria – right. It's a B minus. But to me, I know I wrote an A paper because I, I'm an English major. I know how to write papers. I've constructed it very well. I know I can write very well. I know that was an A paper. Part of the college game is figuring out what each individual professor wants and yep. giving them that, even if you disagree with it. <laughs> yeah, they're the ones with the grade book in the end. Yep. But I still got an A in class. So That's good. Awesome. Oh, okay. <laughs> good. I thought you were saying B minus for the class. I was like, no way. No, I got to be minus on the paper. On the paper. All so, right. But an A for the class. A for that, the class. I believe. I need, I need that GPA. Yeah. yeah. Right. That doesn't make sense because the, the GPA doesn't transfer just – the grade doesn't even transfer just the credit. But <laughs> Right. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Yeah, right. You're right with that. Yeah. So I was going to say online classes are still fairly new, and we do have some standards, at least a basis of of what good pedagogical methodology is. So these are the kinds of things that we want to get accomplished in the classroom. But because they're so new, there's just so much leeway out there for change and growth. So I teach a lifespan development course online and Mm -hmm. I'm tweaking it every year now uh, to make it better. So I found that often my discussion questions ended up being more like assignment posts. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I've got the assignment posts. People can read the book and then tell me what it is that they understood from those questions. But I needed something that required more thought with the discussion. So that's what I'm working on now. And you said a wrinkle in time for the book. What I'm trying to think of is how I can get more videos that are appropriate for every chapter Mm -hmm. in there. So you said that you're interested in film. I'm also a big film. I love movies. Um, Is that right? Oh, I do. Yeah. Yeah. So I used to teach an abnormal psychology course, which is not really don't have the background for that. So it wasn't the best match. But I would have people watch movies and then try to do a diagnosis based on what they were seeing in the movies. So at least it was an attempt. <laughs> Better with the lifespan. The abnormal is, is for I clinical I believe folks. Anthony Perkins has a split personality. Right? There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Or, uh, That'd be a Norm- good Norman Bates. That was, the, Norman uh, Bates. that was a character name. So, yeah, let me recommend Pacific Heights for you for antisocial personality. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever seen that movie? Uh, Michael no. Michael Keaton. Oh, it's really good. What, Michael what, Keaton, Melanie Griffith, and Matthew Modine. What year? Might be the 80s. Okay. <laughs> Don't tell me that was before you were born. <laughs> oh, uh, <I'm> depressed. <laughs> well, I'll tell you this, Dr. Beck. Uh, I'm 23. So, oh, I'm and, depressed. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm a, I, I recognize all those actors' names. Okay, so, good. So it, good. being that I'm a, I'm a film buff, Just, know, yeah. I'm, whenever I talk about film with people, I'm throwing out, um, man, it was written directed by this person. Man, this guy was a cinematographer, had all these people in acting in it. Yeah. And I'm like, uh, man, you're like a walking IMDb. Huh. Yeah, uh, one of my favorite apps, <laughs> IMDb. <yeah. laughs> but uh, Pacific Heights? Pacific Heights. And yeah. would you happen to know off the top of your head who directed it? No, I don't remember. But uh, M- Michael McKeaton, Melanie Griffith, Mc- and Matthew Modine. Did I say Michael McKean? Um, I mean, Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton. Michael McKean. No. <laughs> Michael McKean. No. Um, oh, now I'm forgetting his name. Uh, he was in Bird. Bird? He was in... You mean Birdman? In, oh, I can see his face. 
not Birdman, because Birdman was about him being an actor superhero. Yeah, that was him. Yeah, Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton. Michael, yeah, Ke- Michael Keaton. Also known as yeah. Batman. Eighty nine Batman. Batman. I yeah. stopped watching Batman after a while. <laughs> <laughs> a little tired of Batman. Uh, uh, yeah, I was thinking Birdman is uh, jazz player Charles Mingus. Tra- oh right. no. Uh, Charlie Parker. Charlie Parker. Charlie right. Parker. Bird. There we go. Yeah, definitely, my brain is not working well yet today. <laughs> it's it's only one. So o'clock. you corrected me again. <laughs> <laughs> it's only the middle of. I know, it was it's late, only the afternoon. It was a late. <laughs> when night did you wake up, Doctor? Grading. <laughs> oh, too early, too many times. But I was grading until a little after midnight last night, two thirty, right. twelve thirty. I mean. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's, that's right. That's what um, happens with online courses. Yeah. Not only that, but um. Uh, so I started class this this week, right? But my school is pretty much like a week behind everyone else. Yeah. So you started the week before. You we are did. in full swing. I am in full swing. Yes, we're fully into week two, and yeah, full swing. Monday's ad drop. And that's it. Choose <laughs> your classes, and we got to move. <laughs> and you're teaching how many um, general psychology courses are you teaching? Usually, it varies. Uh, I'll do two, sometimes three a semester. The semester I'm doing two, and then the lifespan course. I get some release time to be department chair and do those those responsibilities. And um, are you teaching anything besides general psychology? Just general psychology and lifespan development. I may try to put a behavior modification class back on the books for the spring. Cool. So, yeah, I'd like to teach that once or twice more before I leave. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's. I really enjoy teaching that class. It's one of my favorites. I remember we had fun. When, yeah, uh, yeah. I I genuinely like what I do. Cool. I'm getting a little old and tired, but <laughs> I genuinely like what I do. Yeah. These kids. Yeah. yeah. Old and tired of these kids. Yeah. Uh, no. 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 <laughs> no I, I enjoy meeting students every year. That's that's a fun part. I like seeing the light bulbs go off in their heads. You also enjoy talking to the microphones for them. No, I don't enjoy <laughs> microphones so much. <laughs> I'm trying to pretend it's not there. <laughs> I feel like, I mean, I suppose at some point during, in, like in the flow of conver- conversation, it does become incidental because you, it, you are just it talking. It does. Yeah, I mean, it does. You know, half the time I don't notice. Oh, is that right? Yeah. I'm try- I try to stare right into their eyes and uh, just be like, uh, yeah, that's been working for me. Making and then contact. just ask them, do you <laughs> like pickles? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I guess it depends on the kind. <laughs> uh, for me, not so much. I'm just, there are people out there who just, they're like, I've only dill pickles. Yeah, right. Or yeah. not anything else. I'm like, oh, they're just pickles. I like them. They taste like pickles to me. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, may I ask where you're from? Uh, originally from Rhode Island, born and raised. Where in like uh, Cumberland? Uh, no, although not far from there. So born in Providence, but we moved to the northwest corner of Rhode Island when I was like maybe 11 or 12. And that's where I spent the rest of the formative years. What was that like? It was good. It was a country setting, at least country for Rhode Island. Um, kind of famous throughout the state for no school. You know, whenever we had a snowstorm, we'd mm. get hit pretty hard in that yeah. part of the state. So. Uh, I, I still, from time to time, uh, I'll go to other places. I was in Florida a few years ago, met some folks from Rhode Island, and I, they asked where I was from. I told them, I went, oh, no school. <laughs> like, yeah. So, carries on. So, yeah, Rhode Island. Um, from Rhode Island, I went to Bridgeport for undergraduate school. At uh, which school? University of Bridgeport. Okay. Um, it was a private school. I guess it's still a private school. It was I think it still very is. different at the yeah. time. It was kind of a hopping place in the 70s. Well, that's when I went. <laughs> uh, from there, back to Rhode Island. I worked in Massachusetts for a while in Attleboro um, and then off to Arkansas for grad school from Arkansas to Washington State. It's a rehabilitation company that privately owned mm. and like went on at the time. The company would sell. They changed position, so my position got cut was a counselor for middle school for a year. It was an interesting experience, and then I came here. Cool. Yeah. And um, I noticed um, your on your the uh, the uh, your name next to the door. Uh, do you have an associate's degree? I have an associate's, a bachelor's, a master's, a doctorate. Yeah. All right. Um, where what's your associate's in? Human services from okay. University of Bridgeport. Yeah, got a oh, they offered also associates. They did at the time. I'm oh, not okay. sure what they offer now. F sound. 
That sounds very uncommon. Like, I mean, I come from the University of Hartford where they do offer associates. Oh, do they? And, yeah. Okay. At, um, because they have, it's kind of like, they have a division that's kind of like a junior college. Right. That's part of the larger university called Hillier College. Right. And that's where, um, I suppose people who are not quite up to snuff to like get into their university proper, <laughs> they might put them in Hillier College where they are put into like a, a associates in like liberal arts kind of program. So are the associates degrees the same? I mean, in terms of what you can get for a four year degree, I mean, can you get a two year liberal arts degree and then a four year liberal arts degree? Yeah, most people who interesting. I think most people who are admitted into here Hillier College, right? the 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 um the assumption is they will earn their associate's degree and then transfer to a different college within the university oh, okay. to to complete the last two years for their bachelor's. Okay, you know, I don't think it was the same setup in Bridgeport. I think it was just a different part of the school for human <clears throat> services or mental health at the time, I think they called it, okay. um, that just had the terminal associate's degree. So I double majored bachelor's and associates. And the bachelor's was in psychology? It was in psychology, yeah. The bachelor of science in psychology. I, <laughs> I dropped and added so many courses one semester that I kind of broke their computer. <laughs> Again, it was a long time ago, so they had me registered for 48 credits one semester. What? Right? So I went in because I wasn't on the roster of the class I was supposed to be in, and I walked in to say, hi, you know, I'm, I'm Robert Beck, and, and I'm not in my class, and all I said was my name, and the woman behind the desk said, it's him! It's him! <laughs> <laughs> It was kind of funny. But yeah, I, I almost graduated with a degree in English. It came down to one course. And I wanted psychology, but I took so many English courses that really? I almost, yeah, didn't get uh, didn't get the psychology degree. So the English courses, that's why, like I said, I don't get corrected a lot <laughs> on word usage. Yeah. I'm always impressed when that happens. So if you're from Rhode Island and you went, uh -huh. what, what influenced your decision to go to Bridgeport for undergrad? I wanted to be away from home, but close enough to home. Okay. And I like the idea of being by the water, so that influenced my decision. In retrospect, I mean, it, it was good. It was certainly an interesting four years of college. Mm. Uh, it was also an interesting juxtaposition in that the school at the time had a lot of money, but it was surrounded on two sides by ghetto. Yeah. So it was... It was disturbing at times to see that. You know, there's yeah. money here. There's absolutely no money here. And it's hard to put all of that together in my head. Towards the end in the last year, it was just starting to get downright dangerous there. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's time to go. It's weird that um, Bridgeport is in Fairfield County. Yes. And I, when I think Fairfield County, I think... Money. I think Keith Richards lives there. And Does he? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know and that. Huh. He lives in like Westport or Weston. No, Westport know. probably. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, yeah, that's where all the rich people go and it's very, rather safe and not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Westport is. <laughs> but, then you, Port, no. but then you also think about all oh, like, hey, Yale and New Haven. That's Yale. Right. But then it's surrounded by New Haven. Yes. And so <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like one step outside the bounds of Yale and you're, you're, you're in New Haven. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not a great area. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> But uh, so, uh, did you earn a master's? I did. I I got that at uh, the University of Arkansas. The program there is is master's into PhD. Right. So. What made you choose Arkansas? I don't know if I want to give you an honest <laughs> answer for that. <laughs> Partly, it was because it was time. I had been out of college for three years, and and I was going nowhere job wise, and I just I wasn't happy. I knew I needed mm. a life change. So I applied to schools in Rhode Island and Washington, D.C., and uh, I don't know, a few others. The, what really happened, honestly, is that I got a graduate handbook of schools in psychology, and I closed my eyes, and I flipped the book open, and I licked my finger, and I stuck it on the page, and it said, University of Arkansas, and I said, that's where I'm going. <laughs> so that's how I got there. No regrets. Yeah. <laughs> 
Wow. And it was a lot less expensive than any of the other schools. Schools in the South are, yeah, yeah cost less. So yeah. I recommend anybody who wants to go to graduate school consider schools in the South. Cool. You'll get the education and it won't cost as much. Hmm. So I've never... I've never lived anywhere other than my hometown. Oh, is that right? Yeah. And which is Torrington. Right. And I have never gone to, I've only ever commuted to school. Okay. I went to school here at Northwestern and of course I commuted here. Right. And now I'm at the University of, University of Hartford and I commute there. Right. I'm always fascinated and subtly jealous of people who have the resources and opportunities to say, go far away for school. I just, um, you know, I I come from a family of immigrants. and mm-hmm. Me too. We Really? Yeah. Uh, from where? Um, Scotland for my father, mm. and I'm third generation Italian on my mother's side. So, mm. yeah. yeah. We all through. come from immigrants yeah. in yeah. this country yeah. for the most part. Yeah. 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 And, uh, People forget that. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, so we don't have, for one, we don't have money to send me to school. Yeah. But we know that's something we're going to do. You know, yeah, right. And so that means we totally do not have money to have me live somewhere yeah. far away. And then there's also like the logistics involved in say, if I like, if I want to go like to the most pre- prestigious, famous film school ever, like University of Southern California School of Cin- Cinematic Arts right. in Los Angeles. Right. That'd be cool. Yeah, it would but be cool. I also know that's the exact opposite end of the country. And there's lots of, money and time and resources that would have to go to driving me and or flying me and my things so I could go to school there. And so it's, yeah. it, although it occurred to me, I would want to go to school to, in a place like that. Right. It never occurred to me on a practical level that that would make sense for me to go there. You know what right. I mean? Right, yeah. Um, I imagine that's going to be pretty expensive as well. Yeah. What about... Um, the art school in Savannah, Georgia. Do they have a film program there? Um, it would be the first I heard of it. I'm sh- okay, but I'm sure there's an art school in Savannah. I bet. I bet there are a bunch of art schools. Yeah. Uh, so I, I'm I'm asking that because one of the things that I will often tell students is, if you can get out of your hometown, even just for a little bit, just to see what else is out there in the world, and I'll often encourage students when they leave here, if they can, to spend one year in a dormitory just because I think you get exposure to more diversity. Mm -hmm. You meet more people from different backgrounds, different interests in going to college. Uh, I, I just think it's a good experience for everybody to have. I mean, I only did it for two years. Two years was more than enough dorm for me, but I I just think that it's a good experience for people to have if they can. And you make lifelong friends there. You know, I I still have friends from 40 something years ago that I met as a freshman in college. We're still in close touch, talk a lot. I mean, I I made a few friends. Good. Because being that, you know, I'm like an hour drive from the university, I spend a lot of time there especially if um my schedule ends up being i just have a large come kind of along block between a couple of classes on a particular day right I'm, you know i'm spending the day there and just sitting around and like um i've been part of student government oh are you? And, good you know i just i meet a lot lots of cool people there that's good and, and i spend all my time in the office you know uh, i'm i'm glad to hear that you're involved with student government there at Getting involved in something like that is going to help you meet more people. Otherwise, you know, commuters are just kind of stuck with, I go to school, I do my thing there, I come home. Luckily for the University of Hartford, they have what is called the commuter lounge in a a, a building where it is, you know, it's a place for meant to attract commuters. Right. It's not only meant for commuters. Anyone can come and go. It doesn't matter. But it is, you know, it's designated commuter lounge for, you know, these Oh, us who um who commute to have like a sense of community right. there, you know what I mean? Okay. So why did you choose Hartford? Um, they were throwing money at me. Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> again, it's the logistics. Sure. I was um when I when I when I graduated from here, Northwestern Connecticut Community College. Mm-hmm. Um, I had an AS. Right. And I know I knew I wanted to transfer to somewhere else with a film program. Right, because that's that's the thing I wanted. Uh, I want to major in film. You know, I had lots of state schools in mind. 
um, plus places like USC right. and NYU, yeah. Emerson College in Boston. Yeah. You know, like re- those like really renowned top name films. Very films. expensive. So, yeah. Yes. And uh, plus, you know, like uh, University of Hartford. The circumstances fell into place that University of Hartford accepted me, threw me a huge bag of money. Awesome. Had a film has a film program program, and it's closest to home. Okay, and okay, so that makes sense. you know that all those criteria really narrowed it down. So this is is this your first year, or your second year? This is my second year at the university. All right. So will you get your degree this year? I will not. No, because okay. Long story. Please don't tell me. Of course, <laughs> it didn't transfer. I will be very <laughs> upset with that. Okay, so I earned an AS here right. at Northwestern, right, in a specific arts field, which means you know most people who are smart go mm-hmm. to community college to get take care of their general education requirements. Sure, right. I did not. I got a very specialized art degree, uh, and so so I, I had some gen eds filled out, mm-hmm. and it would have really helped mm-hmm. if I were enrolled in the Hartford Art School, but I'm not. Right. My art degrees in digital media because I knew one of the main bits of that is videography, which is the closest mm-hmm. thing to filmmaking they would have here at Northwestern. Okay. And so I transferred to University of Hartford as a film major. That's housed in the College of like Liberal Arts and Sciences. Okay. Not the art school. So gotcha. all those art classes pretty much don't matter anymore. Oh, that, I'm really that sorry to hear and, that. <laughs> huh. But um, the thing is, if I, were, if I stayed a film major, I would have right. been out next year. But what what happened was I thought, well, a degree in film is not going to do me many favors. And the only other thing I would tolerate studying is English. Okay. So, like, I'll double major in English. Okay? Okay. But I also knew a degree in English is also not doing me many favors. That's a tough one. And I saw they have their own program where you get certified to teach high school English as you earn your degree. Oh, interesting. So, I thought, oh, I guess I'll do that, too. And then I decided to minor in music. Uh-huh. So uh, it's almost like I'm triple majoring because film, English, the education certification, and then we have a minor hanging around. It's like I'm three and a, three and a half majors. Why do when you can overdo? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> and uh. so it's going to be – so the two years I spent at Northwestern uh-huh. plus four years in change at the university. Ooh, that is master's level. Yeah. Yeah. But it, and it, part of the part of my decision to do that uh-huh. was because that scholarship they gave me, right. even though I was admitted as a transfer student, uh-huh. good for four years. Oh, then sure. Yeah. And I thought any which way you slice it, mm-hmm. that diploma they're handing me yes. is going to be very expensive. Yes. I might as well maximize whatever I can get out of the university. Sure. You yeah. know what I mean? I think that's good thinking. Yeah. No. What are you thinking for uh, beyond the bachelor's? Um, or is it too soon yet? I've been thinking about it. Yeah, have you? Because less, so like the dream is to become like big name Hollywood film director. Uh, I was going to ask you what part of film you wanted to go into, right? directing. So, uh, like writing, direct, writing, producing, and directing films. Okay. But let's face it. Yeah. That's a very tough industry. It is a tough industry. And I'm on the opposite end of the country where it's, I mean, I suppose New York is a viable option, but still. Sure, yeah. And so, you know, the teaching English would be like a fallback. Sure. But the thing is, I don't, I'm not sure if I would ever want to stay teaching high school English for long if I do happen to end up doing that. So. Yeah, I think anybody who teaches high school is just. Worth their weight in gold. Uh, <laughs> people think I think people underestimate yeah. so what it takes I, to work in that setting. I talked I talked to an, another professor of mine about this, uh-huh. but um, I was trying to figure out what would make sense in terms of advanced degrees to get. Sure. Where um, because I know in Connecticut, yeah. if you were to begin teaching English in high school, yes. te- begin teaching high school, you would eventually are required to. Um, earn a master's degree I to continue most teaching. Most places, it's like that. Yeah, yeah. but I uh, I also heard it's um, 
like that master's degree doesn't need mm-hmm. to be in education. It doesn't even have to necessarily be in the field yeah, you're I think teaching. That's also true. The subject yeah. you're teaching at the school. And so the thing I was thinking about was if my creative endeavors never pan out mm-hmm. and I do decide to go to graduate school, mm-hmm. I would probably earn a master's degree in film production and possibly a doctorate in English. So okay. I could feasibly teach film and English at the university level. Good thinking. That's, I think, a great way to look at it. Yeah. yeah. It's a nice little double. Yeah. We have um, two PhD English professors here. One master's level. But I don't think we have any film folks here that do English and film. You know, I don't know who does film for us now. Cause Did you ever have? No, actually. We had photography. Yeah. And now that's gone. He, because the person retired and yeah. we didn't have anybody. And to um, then they, I was here right before they did away with the dark room right. in Greenwoods. Right. Um, I was the part of the last generation of students taking photography who did work in the dark room, did film photography. Oh. Is that, well, first I'll say two words, budget cuts. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, is that because is photography changing now that everything's digital? Or I suppose that's it. Yeah. Um, now they only offer – they got rid of the photography certificate right. and whatever else would have been related to photography, the programs in photography. Right. And now I'm pretty sure the only thing they really offer is digital photography for non-majors. Okay. And plus like ancillary programs like digital imaging, which is basically like a class in Photoshop. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. But you learned how to mix the chemicals and do all that stuff. Oh, no, no. <laughs> oh, you didn't? No, no okay. Yeah. No, uh, Michael Yergules, the uh, ph- photography instructor I had here, was the one who mixed chemicals. Oh, okay. All right. Huh. I, I thought just, that would I just, be part I of just, what they trained you to do. I just put my, my paper in the chemicals yeah. to huh. print them, and that's it. <laughs> all right. Huh. It's a class I've never taken. I'd, I'd be interested in taking that, and, and I want to learn how to throw pottery. Mm. We throw pottery? They throw pots. Well, I can throw pots, but you know, they break when they <laughs> hit things. Um, is that the yeah, term? Yeah, that you throw pottery. Yeah, you throw pots. You put them on a wheel. and I've never heard the term yeah, throw. Oh, no? Yeah, I'm I've pretty heard, sure I've heard ghosting. Uh, <laughs> ghosting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> don't start singing. <laughs> Move my coffee out of the way so I don't spill it on anything electrical. <laughs> Were you ever interested in like artsy kind of whatever's interested i have very little art talent what i see in well, my head does not come out through my fingers i'll tell you this neither do i yeah oh is that right yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> funny uh, uh, like um when i was um when i was in my program here it was an arts program so it was lots of hey you're gonna take like drawing classes and stuff right like <laughs> i'm sorry but i that my major is digital media, not right. traditional media. Yeah, yeah. And even then, not so much because I hate using Photoshop. You know, it's more I'm thing I'm more I'm most excited about. I'm more diligent in is like video editing or stuff. You know. Okay. Interesting. And I even ended up taking stuff like graphic design and web design. And I know I'm not I'm not like a designer. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. I have a mind for design. Uh huh. Where I can, like, if I look at someone's sign that they designed, it's like, you probably shouldn't use uh, yellow for the f- for the font. Or, like, right. you used Comic Sans. Uh, yeah. You can probably fix the kerning on those, the space between those letters. Yeah. Huh. Or something like that. Or um, the, the hierarchy of information. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, the most, probably the most important thing about this sign or poster you have should be, the, like, in the biggest font ever. Yeah. For as in relation to everything else on oh. on the thing, but I'm not like I try to use Adobe Illustrator. I'm oh, just yeah. like, how do you what? <laughs> <laughs> I just had to use Shutterstock for <laughs> something recently, and I don't know what I did, but I ended up getting charged twice for the same exact thing. <laughs> <laughs> like I even the artwork I made for this for my show the uh-huh. podcast. Uh huh. Like my girlfriend helped me with that. Oh, is that right? She's, yeah. an, she's an art student uh-huh. and. <laughs> Also at University of Hartford? Or? No, she goes to uh, the Maine College of Art. Oh, okay. In Portland, Maine. Right. Which is where um, Sue Berg went for grad school. Right. I forgot about the college there. Yeah. How do um, you like the cold? 
Feels like England here. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cold and damp. Yeah. Maine. Have you been to Maine? Oh, uh, not in many years, and only the very southern part of it. Hmm. So. I might. I've never been. No. Even though it's pretty. Yeah. And my girlfriend is something like, "Hey, you should come visit." I'm like, "I don't have money to buy gas to go up there." Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but also, um, about maybe tr- maybe sometime in my life. I would go up there. What about a train? To like go bother Stephen King. <laughs> if he's still alive well, when I do it. <laughs> right. Uh, have you ever thought about taking a train up there? Mm, trains exist. Huh? Yeah. Trains exist. Never thought about it, no. Yeah. But yeah. maybe. Might be an interesting trip to take. Yeah. Could be very beautiful. Yeah. I could just um, read a couple of Stephen King books on the way up right. there. Right. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So you went to grad school in Arkansas. I did. Yeah. And um, was... The intention to like go into research? Yeah. I mean, it, I wasn't really sure what it was that I wanted to do when I got there. Like I said, I, I knew I needed a life change. Mm-hmm. So that was a start. I went to a new setting. I went to school. I think I started school more to, well, figure out what I wanted in life. And then over time, I, I grew into it. I had some really great mentors there. Uh, and I, Ended up getting into something that I love, which was you know applied behavior analysis. So, what does that mean? Yeah. What does that entail? Uh, assessment of behavior, the antecedents to behavior, the consequences that follow the behavior, reorganizing the environment to change behavior or to maintain behavior, depending on what it is you're looking for. Right. Okay. From someone. And so. um, when did you start teaching? Or more importantly, how did you get into teaching? I started teaching uh, at the University of Arkansas as a graduate student. At first, I was a research assistant. and I don't remember. If, I think I applied for a teaching assistantship, and I got it. And I found that I really enjoyed it. I did pretty well. Um, I ended up getting an award for you know, student teaching, which was nice to have. Mm-hmm. Uh they, I guess, were confident enough. They gave me a class of 180 students as a graduate student. That's a pretty wow. big deal. Yeah. And then from there, I went to a startup uh, community college, also in Arkansas. Uh, worked there for a couple of years, but the pay wasn't there, right? I had to pay back student loans, mm-hmm. and I just wasn't making enough. So that's how I ended up in Washington State. Actually, I got a job at Worcester State, and I was going to teach there, but I got lured away by this rehabilitation company and money and Washington State. You know, it was Worcester, Seattle, Worcester, Seattle. It was... Which seems more interesting. Yeah. I went to Seattle. (laughs) Probably not very nice of me to leave them in the lurch at Worcester State, but I gave them a couple of months anyway. Mm. And how long were you um, in Seattle? About three years. It was like I said, the job, my position got cut. Uh, so they kept my assistant. <laughs> they kept it the higher up. Yeah. <laughs> so I was unemployed for a little bit, and then I found this counseling job. It's a, a takeover for a year. Did that. And, and then you eventually, yeah. eventually ended up in uh, in Connecticut. I wanted to come back to be closer to family. Okay. So so close, you know, 100 miles away. It's like good distance. Cool. <laughs> yeah. When you first started teaching here, yeah. was it was it only general psych? What did I teach when I first came here? It was general psych. I did abnormal a couple of years. I think I did social psychology a couple of times. I did – we do psychology in two sections, psych one, psych two. So I did psych two uh, a few times, uh, behavior modification. So, yeah, it was a number of different classes. And um, do, you, do you have a – a favorite class you like to teach? I like teaching Psych 1. I, I absolutely enjoy it. Uh, like I said, I like seeing the light bulbs go off in people's heads. Uh, and I like teaching the behavior modification course a lot. I also, I like the lifespan course. It's intensive. You were talking about writing papers. I have students write three minimum 400 word posts a week. I really prefer they write 500 to 1,000 words per post. Mm-hmm. So it's a lot of reading. It's a lot of, you know, grade for content and grade for English, 
which I know frustrates a lot of people because they've gotten this far with you know, sometimes bad habits in their writing and, and or not knowing how to English. Yeah, <laughs> not knowing how to English. Yeah, yeah. As native speakers of yeah. English. Yeah. 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 Aside from me correcting you on your English, yeah. what do you remember about me having me in your class? You sat in the front. Mm-hmm. Uh, I remembered asking you for help to make copies one day, and you gave me this look like, what the hell? But then you gave me a second look of, okay, I'll do it. <laughs> By the way, I didn't know how to work that copier. Is that what it was? <laughs> <laughs> and I had about 30 other people in the room. I'm like, I, I, I've got to find somebody that yeah. I can trust. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so I just remember you being very intelligent and on top of things. And, yeah. Yeah. And doing well in the class. Is there a um, particular part of gen, like Gen Psych 1 you would think is like the most difficult for people to grasp at first? I think it's the physiology section is, is definitely one of the most difficult because it ends up being a whole new language mm-hmm. in many ways. I mean, psychology itself is a whole new language for people and a new way to conceptualize and think. And then you start adding on all of these other terms, and that's where I lose people. So I always have incredible respect for people who come in who are not native English speakers. So they have the language that's native to them, the English that they've learned, and now they're learning a whole new language with psychology. And that's, mm-hmm. to my mind, that's a lot for any one person. One of the, um, the things that stuck with me from taking your psychology course uh-huh. is um, – volatility and fragility of memory. Right. Because when you think, again, in most people's minds, they think they're right. Always, and yeah. Especially when it comes to, no, I remember this. I know, I remember I was there. And so, I know I was there. I'm an eyewitness, whatever. Right. And I, what the thing I know holds weight because I was there. But as you and I both know, memory is really... It's it's a fragile, fragile thing and highly susceptible to distortion. Yeah. Especially since like people are, can be so suggestible. Yes. Like yeah. it's it can be like literally the difference of one word. Like say, hey, did you see a broken headlight? Right. That means yeah. there may or may not have been a broken headlight. Right. But if you change this one hey, did you see the broken headlight? That postulates that there was that's assuming right. there was a headlight and you can totally plant that yeah, and you can absolutely. incept you can incept in someone's mind that there was a headlight even though there wasn't and good lawyers know that <laughs> yeah, they do and, and they use it good lawyers mm. well, like, yeah no I'll leave it at good lawyers <laughs> <laughs> we're just starting just starting that section of memory now in one of my classes uh, and the other thing to throw in there with with distortions of memories is that biases, your preconceived biases also can distort your memory. Yeah, even the ones you're not quite totally aware of. Right, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Good. I'm, I'm glad you remembered that in <laughs> the class. Yeah. Yeah, I remember you told a story about how, like, you were uh, at the scene of an accident or something. Oh, you remember and you that? Gave, you gave a statement to, like, you know, the, Please, author- the authorities. Yeah. The legal process is slow as a sloth. And so months later, they're like, hey, can you come back and uh, give another statement? A year statement? later, yeah. They wanted me to come back and testify. I was like, I can't tell you anything different. I remember that it was a very large white man and a very slight, I'm thinking maybe a Filipino man. And the the white guy was just yelling at this guy and, and pulling a knife. And it was not, you know, it wasn't good. Yeah. Um, so I'm yelling and screaming and jumping up and down trying to get him to stop and trying to get the security guard in the parking lot who was sitting in his car doing Lord knows what, looking around. Um, I finally got his attention. He came over. The cops came, all of that. But yeah, once I gave that statement, I moved across country. I got a new job. I found a new place to live. I had lots of things going on. There was no way I could remember all the details of that. So you have my statement. That's all I can tell you. Yeah, and I remember you you specifically said to – at least while you relate to the class, as you told the story, you were like, I have a goddamn doctorate in psychology. I know how fragile memory is. Just read my statement from when, from when it happened. 
Did I say that? Or no? Well, <laughs> not the goddamn. I don't, know. <laughs> I don't know. It's not out of the realm of possibility. <laughs> Although typically not in the classroom. Yeah. yeah. I typically watch my language in the classroom. <laughs> I, I often say I have summer language and school year language. Yeah. yeah. And the transition to summer language is easy. The transition back to school lang- school year language sometimes is harder. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can swear on this, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good to know. <laughs> you can swear, admit to a crime. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Because, <laughs> yeah, I want people to know that. No, I, uh, no crimes that I need or want to admit to. Yeah. <laughs> The person in charge is me, and I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do, you have, do you have anything? Are you excited for anything coming up in the courses you're teaching or what, anything else you're doing this year? Oh, let's see. I'm trying to think. What's going to happen in this year? I am getting closer to retirement. I, I see that on the horizon. Um, I don't know where I want to be when I grow up. <laughs> <I'm> so, <laughs> me neither. Yeah, so I, I'm trying to figure out where I want to go from here. Am I going to stay? Am I going to go to someplace new? Um, I think I just really need to travel to check out some other places in the world. Uh, the Caribbean is often my go-to. <laughs> um, I don't know yeah, if I, I want to go used there. To, somewhere used to make else. a joke in class, like. Uh, Get up, get a boat, go some. Go right. To- <laughs> so my price for an A, if you want to buy me off, I will say this on air. My price for an A is this: forty-five foot boat, five-year slip rights in the tropical island of your choice, provided there's no extradition. <laughs> you give me all of that, I will give you an A in any course. I could give you an A. <laughs> <laughs> I did have a student say once, you know, Doctor Beck, I have a boat, and I shove my fingers into my ears and start going la la la. la, la. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, you know, I, like I said, I don't know where I want to go when I grow up. I start to think less and less of plane travel and cruises and all of those sorts of things just for the amount of pollution that goes on Yeah, with all of them. So I'm getting less enamored with that kind of travel. You know, climate change is happening and we begin to hear more and more data that does not look good, start to think about, well, you know, it's time to take more responsibility for what it is that we're doing if we want to keep a healthy planet yeah. and healthy us. So More importantly, a healthy place for you to take your boat. Right, to, exactly. To, yeah. To, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I used to say sailboat, by the way, and I'm not sure I'm into that anymore. So if anybody's listening for this... Power boat. Power boat's good. 45 foot minimum. <laughs> <laughs> I need to be able to stand up inside the cabins. <laughs> and I should make it work after five years. You know? I can do charters. Yeah. Funny you remember that still. I uh, have a good memory. Yeah, you do. For memory. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <it's> in- <laughs> right? Funny. And, and uh, you know, sometimes I, I have – my brain works in a way where um, it just stores crap and uh, – to the point where I'll, I'll remember minute things, mention it to people. They'll be like, why? That's creepy. Right. <laughs> yeah. Mine works that way. For If I could remember as much academic information as I could so easily from movies and yeah. comedies and those sorts of things, I'd be a genius. But yeah, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> well, I, I suppose I'm kind of there and I'm not. Yeah. But, right. <laughs> Motivation also is like, a huge part. I don't, there are people who, um, like some of my friends who don't understand how I have so many things memorized, mm-hmm. like my Wi-Fi password, which it's not even like words. It's literally just random letters and numbers. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, if I look at something enough times because I have to reference it, I'm going to end up memorizing it. Sure, absolutely. You know, like my driver's license number. So you remember something. this from memory, things that we do with effort frequently become automatic over time we don't think about them we just do it like texting yeah now when people first learn to text they have to look and with practice they don't even look at what they're texting yeah and um i even noticed like um i may have taken like typing courses in like middle school Mm -hmm. but i don't think of course i didn't do it properly the advent of me working on a computer a lot typing a lot of stuff right i can type out words without looking at the my fingers right you know even though what i do some most of the time i do still look at my fingers you know what i mean yeah when I make a mistake. I was talking about that in class yesterday, which is funny. I had typing in high school, 
before there were computers, <laughs> still typewriters. Typewr- <laughs> and the teacher would say, don't look at your fingers so much that I ended up looking at my fingers all the time. I went from not looking at it after a few prompts to because you kept saying that, you kept saying that, I ended up doing it. But, <clears throat> you know, I relate that back to applied behavior analysis. One of the things we tell people is never – reinforce somebody for something they're not doing. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to say to somebody, that's really good not having a tantrum. Oh, a tantrum? I forgot. (laughs) Let me have one. (laughs) Don't think about elephants. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Don't look at your fingers. And um, would you say you're okay at typing now? (laughs) I am because I can look at the screen and see what's coming up. I don't have to look at my fingers. Do you ever find yourself, um, my mind and my fingers are moving so quickly to the point where I will catch myself making a mistake and then immediately after that hit the delete button without skipping a beat. Right. Yeah. Can you ever find yeah. yourself doing that? Absolutely. Um, the typing becomes automatic. So you'll often be not processing. You're not thinking about what your fingers are doing. You're thinking about what your – I got to put it in these terms. Your cortex, the upper part of your brain is thinking about, all right, what is it that I want to say? Your cerebellum, the lower part of your brain, is the part that's that's coordinating the typing for you, and you don't think about what's going on there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So you're going to do this? How long do you think you'll be doing your podcast? Oh, show? hopefully until I, it stops being fun. Okay, that's so, fair. Yeah. I want this to be an ongoing thing, as people who read a description of the podcast can tell. Mm-hmm. The reason I'm doing this is to so I can feed my curiosity. Uh, connect with people, and sometimes get out of house. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. You know, I find talking to people is fun. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we just happen to have microphones absolutely. in their faces. Yeah. Because I took so much preparation recording a bunch in the summer and not launching it until fall. Right. I wanted to um have so many in the bank so that I'm not ever like putting an episode up and not have any on on deck. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I never want I never want to be scrambling to um to have content and to release it. Scrambling causes stress, which I mean <clears throat> some stress is good, too yeah, much, I'm, no I'm, good. You know, I'm I'm regularly taking twenty credits a semester. Twenty credits? How are you taking twenty credits? Who the hell approved that? Uh, uh whoever uh my advisor That is way too much. Why no, are you taking twenty credits? Because um I told you four years and change of my curriculum. Okay. But my, my scholarship is good for four years. Yeah. Which means like I'll have to fill in with like summer courses, winter sessions, overloading. Look, I'm Are not, you counting that as part of the 20 credits? Take winter session or summer sessions? Or are uh, you saying 20 20 every credits semester? right now. I took 20, like the first semester at the university, 18, uh-huh. I took 18 credits full load. That is, that's the top of the full load. The next semester I took 20. And now this semester, I'm also taking 20. I cannot believe anybody approved that for you. <laughs> well, I, I, right. well, the thing is, I thought about it. Yeah. I, I thought this through. I'll be like, I, I told myself, take like one or two courses like in summers, maybe a course in the winter session. Um, and when you're in like fall, spring, regular semesters, mm-hmm. really be gentle. Don't go... Okay. Um, don't go to like 21, 22 credits. Be gentle. 19, 20 credits. You know what I mean? That is not gentle. <laughs> well, I mean, gentle in the sense of gentle overloading. <laughs> oh, yeah. 12 credits is gentle full time. <laughs> 18 credits is full load full time. 20 credits is, yeah. that's a lot. I mean, it'd be, I'd probably kill myself if I were like working. Because yeah, you know, yeah. an hour drive to my school plus like right. a job plus the workload I'm putting on myself. Right. Plus me starting this podcast yeah. that I want to be able to do yeah. while I'm in school. Yeah. You know what I mean? One of the things I find here a lot and I've consistently found here a lot is that people overextend. They work full time and they try to go to school full time. That is two full time jobs right there. Yeah. You know, or they work three jobs and I'm only taking 12 credits. You're working three jobs. 12 credits is a lot when you're working three jobs because school in the end is a j- 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 job, you know? Yeah. 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 Well, although I suppose, so the first semester I was there, 18 credits full load. Oh. Um, it was, I don't want to say most of it was challenging because a lot of it was, 
what was I taking? I was taking like an intro to film course, uh -huh. which in the end, the only big thing you have to worry about is like the term paper. Okay. Otherwise, you're just watching movies and talking about it. That sounds awesome. <laughs> yeah. And then like, that's not challenging. That's, yeah. And then there's like, um, I took a music theory course, uh -huh. which um, I'm such a nerd for the nuts and bolts of how things work, especially music. Uh -huh. It was totally not challenging, except for the part where I didn't know how to read music. Right. I mean, I eventually caught up. Did you? Yeah. And so I would say right there, child's play. Interesting. And then like a gen ed um, math course. It's literally just math. Are you kidding me? Look at me. I'm Asian. And I, not only that, but I was, I was originally a STEM, I was originally going to major right? in a STEM, STEM field. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm like, again, child's play. Huh. There's literally nothing I've never learned before. And then, um, a philosophy course. Uh huh. I have a mind for philosophy and the assignments he gave, my instructor gave were not hard. Huh. I didn't even have to like take notes because not only have I been exposed to philosophy before, uh -huh. but I have the mind for it. It's right. not that hard for me to understand all these concepts right. that really do fly over other people's heads. Right, right there, child's uh, play. Uh. And then, what else did I take? Um, maybe the one challenging thing might have been um, like a introduction to education, human services kind of course. Uh -huh. Where, first of all, the only slot that would work in my schedule in the, mm -hmm. during that time, mm -hmm. 8 a.m., oh. an hour drive. Oof. And I, of course, wanted to beat traffic and get good parking. So, so I woke up at 6. I would think that still puts you in traffic. And then, like, leave after the 10 minutes of me getting ready. Yeah. And oh. so I can be at the school, find parking at, like, 7 a.m. and wait until 8 a.m. for my class. Oh. I, I need to wake up and have an hour of <laughs> silence. I don't want to talk to anybody. Even my pets don't yeah. leave me alone. For the first hour. So that brought up a lot of things for me. One is music wise, have you thought of getting involved with WAPJ in Torrington, the music station there, radio station? Um, I thought about it. Yeah. Although you are busy right now. I am busy. Yeah. And I don't think, um, I don't, I don't think that would be not where you want to go. Not sure because I'm not sure what kind of restrictions they would put on me. Like whatever, because yeah, like if I were off, say the music selections, if I were like to become a radio DJ, uh -huh. it I'd basically like, can I have just a day where I just play Beatles records? Or I don't think that they would say one thing or another. I about mean, that. or just I would be like, I think they'd be happy to or, have people or be there. like weird weird stuff. Uh -huh. Like um, hey, have you guys heard this Robbie Shankar record? Why not? Put it put it on and like. Perhaps they have like this maybe reservations about alienating their audience or something I like that. I don't know. I the only way to find out is to ask. I don't know. I, I suppose I'm friends with somebody who is a DJ there. I don't know what their yeah. rules and regs are. And um this podcast here is kind of me doing radio, I suppose. Right, yeah. I know for sure if I were to be working at a radio station, I wouldn't want to do a talk show because of all the red tape and such that right. goes into being doing a radio show. Right. Like, oh, you don't swear. Um, you have to reset your guests. <laughs> reset your guests? Yeah, like um, every like 10 minutes yeah. or something. Like, you'll probably have to say, hi, we're uh, at a uh, gotcha. radio station with guests. Insert, gotcha. insert guest name. Uh, all right. huh. <laughs> I even heard about some guy who was like, some guy who was working in radio talking about all these podcasters. Don't even reset their guests. Uh -huh. Like, well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Well, in case you scrubbed all the way to the middle of this episode, I'm here <laughs> with. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. So, all right. So that was the WAPJ, the music part. The other thing that I was dying to ask is what films did you see in the film class? Um, Citizen Kane. Right. Okay. Right. Good. Um, Classic. In that, that particular instructor had a good, good kind of mix of like modern and old, oh, older right, yeah. kind of like I, the first movie we watched in my introduction to film class was The Age of Innocence by Martin Scorsese, hmm. 1993. I don't know that I've seen that one. Daniel Day Lewis and Michelle Pfeiffer. Yeah. It. No, I don't think I've seen that. And um, there was other stuff like um, Psycho. Yeah. Uh, by Hitchcock. Right. Um, Strictly Ballroom by Baz Luhrmann. Oh, is that the no? That's not the one set in Australia, is it? It might be, uh, because he is Australian. Paul Mercurio. It might have been. The big thing was they're going to dance the Paso Doble. Yeah, yeah. I okay, so. I right. think, seen I think that. Yeah, was. that was good. Um, what else? Uh, stuff like um, the Little Foxes. Oh, I have not seen that. That is, is that Ken Russell. 
William Wyler. Ah, oh, right. Okay. I think. Um, yeah, I have not seen that one. Who's in that? Do you remember? What's her name? Wasn't Betty Davis, was it? It was Betty Davis. Wasn't Betty Davis? Yeah. Yeah, I'm surprised I haven't seen that. Yeah. That sounds like something. That was, um, like that I remember it was in, released in 1941. Uh-huh. And it had the same cinematographer as Citizen Kane, which oh. was also released in 41. Oh, interesting. Huh. So, so what else did you see? Um, if I can remember. Uh, what else? Oh, Waltz with Bashir. No. Don't from know 2008 that. or something. Hmm. It's a documentary by this guy about the Lebanese genocide or something. Hmm. And it's animated. Oh. It's an animated documentary. Well. Not only that, but it's an, he was like part of the military regime or something. Okay. And like unknowingly took part in this genocide or something. Huh. And it's him trying to explore his memories, talking to people he knew back then to find out like these dreams I'm having, were they real? Did they happen? Were you well, there? And it's really interesting. Well, that sounds pretty powerful. Yeah. Yeah. And um what else? All about Eve. Any um, chance? Not all about Eve. No, have you seen that? Uh I have not seen that. Oh, that's a great movie. But um two thousand and one. Uh, there was no Kubrick, if no, as much okay. as I would have loved to have Kubrick. Ken Russell at all? I don't think so. Um, David Lynch? No. No? He, this no. guy who t- who taught my course, he's very much like a bohemian kind of very leaning toward like French New Wave kind of guy. Okay. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. But I don't think there was – I don't think he showed us French New Wave stuff. But um, hmm. it was um, uh, Battleship Potemkin. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sir – uh, I was yeah. Gonna, what, huh. what the hell is his name? Sergey Eisenstein. Mm, yeah, I don't know. He, um, uh, I don't know, lot, lots of stuff. You know, that wasn't the one about the battleship that disappeared, was it? Was that no, the ba- okay. I know it was just it was like Soviet propagandist kind of. Yeah, gotcha. You know, gotcha. I'm trying to think of what other movies. Oh, there's one with Michael Pitt when you said this guy likes French New Wave. Um, the it's not the Misfits, it's not the Rebels, it's not the Young. The Warriors? No. The Untouchables? Warriors was good. Uh, no, not the Untouchables. So it's Michael Pitt is an American in France, uh, very much into French film, and it's right at the time of big student protests, and he becomes friends with a brother and sister, and becomes this very sort of twisted little relationship thing. Mm, I don't know. No. Yeah, okay. Mm. But uh, that's all I can remember off the top of my head. Okay. So that would I've never taken a film class. I would love <laughs> to take a film class. Really? Yeah. Yeah. You never had like the option to take like a film elective at any of the uh, institutions. In Bridgeport, I did, and I just for whatever reason never took it. Mm. Yeah. I had lots of friends who did. Yeah, never took it. What, what would um, since you self-professed kind of film buff? No. What What's your favorite movie? Oh, there are a bunch. All About Eve is is one of the tops. Requiem for a Dream. Probably. Oh, yeah. Did he show you that one in class? No, I don't think he. I don't think he was. A, he would have shown that. No, Aronofsky. But I love Aronofsky. He is incredible. Yeah. And I've only seen, I think, two: uh, Requiem for a Dream and The Black Swan. Oh, okay. I have not seen Pie. And, Pie is great. Yeah, is it? I always hear that, and I don't know why I haven't it's, been able to fantastic. bring myself to watch it. It's. Um. I don't think it's out on like. Blu-ray yet? Huh, okay. It's just lost. Netflix. To, I mean, Netflix. you can find it digitally, of course. Yeah, right. But um, uh, his last movie called Mother with Jennifer Lawrence and Javier Bardem. Huh. Okay. 2017. The title is stylized in all lowercase with an exclamation point at the end. And I, whenever mm-hmm. I refer to it, I just go Mother. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> or I try to be like uh, <laughs> Tony Hale playing Buster in the rest of the development. Mother. Uh, right. All right. Uh, and um. It's uh, I don't want to spoil anything for you. Okay. But if you ever if you ever find yourself bored and with an afternoon, Mother by Aronofsky. Huh? Yeah, it's, I've got to write that down. It's so. uh, it's um, it's a trip. It, all of his movies are yeah. a trip. <laughs> I mean, The Black Swan. Well, actually, The Black Swan and Requiem for a Dream were both like yeah. watching train wrecks. You yeah. know, just open oh, mouth, oh. Uh, wide eyed. Did the, that just happen? The second half of Mother. Yeah. Is complete. Utter insanity. Really? Yeah. Oh, now I've got to see this. And, <laughs> huh. And I don't want to... If I start describing it, it's going to give Tell stuff Tell me who up. is in it again. Jennifer Lawrence. Jennifer Lawrence. Javier Bardem. Javier Bardem. 
Michelle Pfeiffer, Ed yeah. Harris, uh huh, Donald Gleason and his uh-huh. brother Brian Gleason. Okay, Brian Brendan. Brian. Brian. Uh, it's, okay. a, it's spelled Brian, but he's Irish, so it's pronounced Brian. Okay, all right. Um, Kristen Wiig is in it for a hot minute. Huh. And it's a uh, yeah. it's a it's a trip to watch. Okay. Is it comedy or no? Oh, it's not a comedy at all. It's not. It's not. It's um. It's fucked up. Is what it okay. is. Okay. All right. I definitely need to see this <laughs> now. Okay. Mother. Twenty seventeen. Right. Okay. <laughs> all right. Yeah, I will look for this when I finish grading today. Okay. <laughs> cool. Right. Well, um, uh, we gone on for a while. Uh, nope. I think this is good. That was painless. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. So, uh, cool. Good. Are we done, or do we have more to talk about? Uh, we can You're be the done boss. If we, <laughs> we can be done if you want. Yeah, I, sub, I mean, most of it is, of course, not all the episodes have a set length. It's right. more about the dictated by the in, energy of the conversation, okay. I suppose. Huh. So, I think we should do another one just on film. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would hate having to like edit a video portion. Oh yeah. That's why I chose to do a pod, a audio, audio podcast. Yeah, no, I meant t- talking about film. Though. Oh, right, yeah. right. <laughs> but uh, I have this set up in a way where you know you can totally come back later. Like, oh, interesting. You, know, okay. you can be a re- returning guest uh, at some point. Yeah. You know, I'd do that. Yeah, cool. it was cool. painless. I'm not <laughs> going home going, oh my god, what just happened? Yeah. <laughs> huh. Sometimes one of my favorite podcasts. Um, this guy, he does like deepish interviews, uh-huh. and then sometimes people come in and they're like, "Well, based on what I know and what I've listened to, he's gonna like make me realize I was molested as a child or oh, something." <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm just gonna realize something about myself I didn't want to. Yeah, you're right. Uh, <laughs> but I suppose, I mean, sometimes it gets into deepish interviews. Yeah. For me, uh, I mean, mm-hmm. just not very much, not all the time. Uh-huh. It's very. It's, that's a. It's not. I don't think anyone's gonna have some big revelations on my show. We're okay. just we're just talking. We're having fun. Whatever. All right. Good. Cool. So this was fun. Yeah. Yeah. Was it fun for you? Do this again? Yeah. It was absolutely fun for me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need a cigarette now or anything. Yeah. yeah it was fun for me. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, give me a drink. Yeah. Right. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, uh, thanks for coming on. All right. Thank you very much. Well, hopefully, see you again. Cool. All right. Is that it? We're done. Yep. You hit a button. How do you do it? Or did you hit your button already? What? Oh, I haven't hit the button yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm telling you, this is still all I'm a neo fight with this stuff. Yeah. I'm still right. a Luddite at heart. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm.